I thought that I would dedicate my videos this month to Disneyland first timers and those who haven't been for a long time. I still remember my first visit to Disneyland in 1996. It was the first vacation I had ever really gone on. Me and my family were just emerging from a very traumatic and hard period of our lives, and it was time to do something fun. So my mom borrowed a co-worker's van, scooped up the paper maps, and in the middle of the summer, we all drove through the Nevada desert without AC all the way to Anaheim, California. I still remember the smell of the ice cream shop and being amazed at the parade floats. It was like stepping into somebody else's imagination. Life had been so heavy and dark and being somewhere where all you had to worry about was what ride you were going to go on next or if you should eat a hamburger or a hot dog for dinner was a very new experience for me. It was like I had to learn to be a kid again and Disneyland handed me the playbook. That's why, even with how much I love to travel and explore everywhere, Disneyland will always be right at the top of my favorite places to visit. And that's why I'm dedicating all the videos I make this month to Disneyland first-timers, those who haven't been for a while, or people who want to just brush up on their Disneyland basics. And what a better place to start than giving a rundown of the entire resort. So let's get started. Let's dig right in here. Now, to make things a bit more bite-sized, I segmented the resort into five different areas. You have Disneyland Park. I also like to call it Disneyland proper, or simply just Disneyland. Then you have Disney California Adventure Park. People will also call it California Adventure, or just DCA. There's Downtown Disney, or the Downtown Disney District. The Disney-owned property hotels. And finally, the Disney-owned parking lots. Starting right away with Disneyland Park or Disneyland proper. This is the original Disneyland Park that opened in 1955. Of course it has changed and grown since then but it's still good old-fashioned Disneyland, especially on Main Street. Disneyland has nine separate lands, each with their own personality. There's Fantasyland. You have Tomorrowland. There's the newly remodeled Toontown. Frontierland. Adventureland. New Orleans Square Critter Country Star Wars Galaxy's Edge and of course Main Street USA
Within those nine lands, you have around 41 attractions and rides to choose from. Entertainment galore. It has around 45 food locations to choose from when you need to refuel, ranging from quick and simple snack kiosks to full-on make reservations, order from a menu, sit down types of restaurant. Of course, it goes without saying you have to buy tickets to enter Disneyland. I will be covering the ticket system in another video, but there are two important things to note. You need to make park reservations at the correct park on top of purchasing your tickets. If you buy your tickets on Disneyland's website, that is done at the same time, but if you buy your tickets anywhere else, you will need to input your ticket VIN number on Disneyland's website or on the app and make a reservation. And always check Disneyland's reservation calendar to make sure there are reservations for the kind of ticket you want to purchase on the day you want it. Different tickets have different availability for reservations, so it's important to be specific on the calendar. Doing all of this will help you avoid any awkward and disappointing experiences at the entrance gate. Still, to this day, every single time I go to Disneyland, I see confused people not getting in because they didn't make reservations or they didn't make them correctly. Making sure you make those reservations is probably the most important thing you could do for your entire trip. In my opinion, the lands in Disneyland are way more immersive. There's more rides to ride, including rides that are friendly for the entire family, especially the little ones. It has more classic characters to me and more large shows and entertainment, especially May through December. Because I get this question a lot, I'll answer it right here, right now. If I only had one day to go to one park, the Disneyland park would be the one I would personally pick. That doesn't mean I hate Disneyland California Adventure Park. I just think you get a lot more bang for your buck at Disneyland, as well as it just being more magical. So let's go ahead and head over to the Disney California Adventure Park, or DCA. This park has an interesting history from its rushed opening in 2001, and it opened to mixed reviews and just an overall underwhelming of the entire park and its theming, and Disney has been trying to reboot DCA ever since. This has meant big changes and additions such as turning the Paradise Pier into Pixar Pier, The adding of Bugs Land and then scrapping and changing Bugs Land to Avengers Campus. Not to mention the addition of one of the most popular lands in all of Disneyland Resort, Cars Land. And the latest change, San Francisco. DCA also has several other lands that have gotten a few little tweaks here and there throughout the years. They include Paradise Gardens. Grizzly Peak, which is an awesome area to hang out when it's super hot. Ah! 
Hollywoodland. And California Adventures version of Main Street, Buena Vista Street. Within those lands, DCA has about 26 rides and attractions to choose from. This park is best known for having more thrill rides that appeal to older audiences. There's not quite as many kid-friendly rides. It has several food-focused festivals throughout the year. And the availability of alcoholic beverages is everywhere in this park, and it's not as limited as Disneyland Park is. The entertainment options kind of ebb and flow depending on what events are going on. There will always be something to see in Avengers Campus. But the World of Color is by far the biggest show and the most popular. If you want more information on it, go ahead and check out my World of Color deep dive video. It will tell you everything you need to know. Food options are the same as Disneyland, with somewhere around 45 food locations to choose from. Although DCA has more food hubs that have clusters of quick service places where Disneyland has a variety spread throughout the park. It also has some pretty good sit-down, more fine dining restaurant options. Um, the Carthay Circle and the Lamplight Lounge are some of my favorite places to eat in the entire resort. Of course, you also need a ticket and a reservation to get into this park. All the same ticketing and reservation rules apply to this park. Disney's California Adventure also has more than one entrance. DCA has its main entrance for everybody. It also has the entrance from the Grand Californian Hotel that anyone can use as long as the park is open. You do have to go through security to go through this entrance though. There's also an entrance in the back for Pixar Place hotel guests only. You'll also have to go through security for this one as well. In fact, you have to go through security to enter the majority of the Disneyland Resort. So double check your bags for anything that could be viewed as a weapon. Talking to security guards, the most common things they confiscate is pocket knives and pepper spray, mostly by people that just forget that they're carrying it on them. Going to Disneyland is a good time to clean out your purse, your backpacks, your diaper bags because every pocket in every compartment needs to be checked. If you're curious, you can check on Disneyland's website for a full list of what is allowed and what is not allowed as well as stroller size requirements and rules for bringing in coolers. As far as parking for the Disneyland Resort is concerned, you basically have two main options park at one of the Disneyland parking lots or park at your hotel or wherever you're staying and then you have to either walk, shuttle, or ride share to the park. Parking can be one of the biggest hidden expenses when it comes to visiting Disneyland, so it takes some smart planning and some know-how if you want to avoid that extra cost. First of all, almost every hotel in the Disneyland area charges a nightly fee for parking a car. If it says in the description, parking available, it probably means the hotel charges somewhere between $15 and $30 a night for parking, and you'll want to check that small print before you book your hotel. You want to look for phrases like parking included or free parking if you don't want to pay for parking. My rule for myself is if I'm paying for parking, it's walking distance to the park, 
or if I'm paying for parking, it's because my parking's free at a hotel a little bit further away. That way I'm not doubling up on extra parking costs. When you park at a Disneyland parking lot, you have three main options for parking. The first two are in the big parking structure behind the parks on Disneyland Drive, the Mickey and Friends parking structure, and the Pixar Pals parking structure. Both of these offer the free tram that will take you to the main gates of the parks. You will go through security before you get on the trams and you'll also need to fold and carry on your strollers you have. They also have access to wheelchair friendly trams. So everyone should be covered and everyone should be able to use this parking lot. The third option is the Toy Story parking lot down Harbor Boulevard. This is a sprawling outdoor parking lot that also offers a free shuttle to the parks. They will have security in the morning, but not all day. And just like the other lots, there's buses for wheelchairs and you'll need to fold your stroller and carry it on. The Toy Story lot also has parking for oversized vehicles like campers and motorhomes, but it will cost a bit more. Both parking lot options have bathrooms at them and will cost you $35 for all day parking as of right now. These parking lots are very large, so make sure you take a picture of where you're parked or use the parked car locator on the Disneyland app so you're not wandering around lost at the end of a long day. There's also the Simba lot for downtown Disney use. The pricing will vary depending on how long you're parked and if you received parking vouchers while dining and shopping. Either way, it won't be any less than $10 and no more than $66 for all day. Overall, these parking lots are pretty safe and clean and easy to use. I wouldn't be too worried about using them. Just make sure to add it to your budget. Speaking of Downtown Disney, let's talk about that next. The Downtown Disney District is free for everyone, kind of like a large outdoor mall. You'll still need to go through security to go to Downtown Disney, but you don't need tickets for it. In 2024, you'll find lots of construction going on around Downtown Disney. It's going through a big overhaul right now. I would assume probably in preparation for the 70th anniversary next year. Because of this big overhaul, you'll never know when one thing is going to open and the other thing is going to close, but generally you'll find around 20 food options and 19 or so shops with several entertainment options as well. I'll be doing a Downtown Disney deep dive soon, so stay tuned for that, but Downtown Disney is a fun place to spend some time when you're not in the parks, whether it's the first night of your trip, or you need some dinner or a treat, or it's the end of your trip and you need a last minute souvenir. For many, it's not a trip to Disneyland without stopping by the Downtown Disney district at some point. Lastly, let's talk Disney-owned property hotels. These are the hotels that Disney owns and are part of the resort. Disneyland is a bit different from Disney World with its Disney property hotels, so if you're a Disney World native, this will be a bit different. There aren't really any affordable Disney-owned properties. They all sit above the $300 a night, but probably closer to $500 and $700 a night. Now, there are plenty of more affordable hotels, and options like that close to the parks, but let's just talk about the Disney property hotels since they're technically part of the resort. Starting with the closest hotel first, in fact it's so close it's technically in the middle of DCA and downtown Disney. Disney's Grand Californian Hotel and Spa. This hotel has a Northern California mountains, Frank Lloyd Wright cabin vibe. This is a very large hotel that offers a variety of rooms and suites that can range from the upper 500s to the mid 700s for a standard room all the way up to the thousands of dollars for multiple room suites. Please note these prices are per night and for rooms only they do not include the park tickets. The Grand Californian has three pools and a water slide. The pools are only available to hotel guests 
They also do an amazing job of decorating their lobby for different holidays and events. This is open for anybody, so make sure you check it out. It has six food and dining options. These food and dining options are also available to the public. They include the Craftsman Grill, the Napa Rose if you want a more fine dining experience, You'll find buffet dining with characters at the Storyteller's Cafe, one of my family's favorite. Sometimes I like to eat at the Grand Californian on days I'm spending at DCA because it's nice and close by option and it gets you away from the crowds and you get to enjoy a good meal. The Grand Californian also has a spa where you can get massages, facials, body and face treatments. You can also get manis and pedis, your hair done, all of that stuff. All of the Disney property hotels offer a chance to participate in unique fitness opportunities inside the parks before they open, like sunrise yoga for around $90 a person or power walking and other movement classes that range from $30 a person. Additionally, staying in these hotels will grant you early access, 30 minutes early to be precise, to enter the parks before everyone else does, you get early access to Disneyland on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, and to Disney California Adventure on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. Moving on to the Disneyland Hotel, this hotel has been part of the Disneyland Resort from the very beginning, although it has changed many times. The Disneyland Hotel sits at the end of Downtown Disney, so you do have to walk the length of Downtown Disney to get to the parks, and there's no special monorail or shuttle or anything like that anymore. The one downside to that really awesome pool, though, is that it's pretty public as far as everyone eating at the surrounding restaurants are, like, watching you while you swim. And if you have a banging swimsuit body and you want to show it off, that might be your jam. The price per night for the Disneyland Hotel ranges from $500 all the way up to the thousands of dollars, but for those prices you can actually get some really cool themed suites at least, like Adventureland, Thunder Mountain, Pirates, Mickey Mouse, and even a fairy tale fantasy suite. The Disneyland Hotel also has five food options, one being a character buffet that offers breakfast, lunch, and dinner that's Goofy's Kitchen, as well as two of my personal favorites, Trader Sam's, which is like an indoor-outdoor fun tiki bar vibe. And connected to that, for a quicker meal experience, you have the Tangoror... Tangora? I can't remember how to pronounce it. Terrace. You can grab a crazy cool drink at Trader Sam's or food, and at the Tangora Terrace, you can get a Dole Whip, classic or spiked, it also has many tasty food options, but I really love getting the poo-poo platter. The evening is the best time to go to these locations when the tiki torches are lit. And if there's live music, it's extra fun. And again, the Disneyland Hotel has the same benefits as the Grand California Hotel does with early entry and all of those extra benefits. And then there's the newly renovated, just barely reopened with its new name, the Pixar Place Hotel. This remodel was a long time coming and makes spending the extra money way more worth it in my opinion. The Pixar Place Hotel is currently the most popular Disney hotel right now with the lowest prices, which are around the upper 400s, up to about $1,500 per night for the suites. Later this year, a Coco Suite and an Incredible Suite will be available. They most definitely did the theming right with this one, with characters from all of your favorite Pixar movies everywhere in the decor, the fun rethemed pool deck that has views of Disneyland's fireworks, two food options for now, but they will see more added throughout the year. I've heard good things about the Great Maple, Plus, when you stay at this hotel, you get to use the special Pixar Pier entrance in the back of DCA. That's just across the street from the hotel. I'll be checking out all the details of this hotel really soon. I hope this was a helpful rundown for you. If you're planning a first-time trip, feel free to leave a comment with any questions, and I may just turn your question into an entire video. And if you're a Disney pro and you still watch this video, bravo, first of all, but also comment Disney pro with anything you'd like to see me cover. 
This will help me plan my year and make sure I bring you all the content you want. Thank you for watching and take care.